I'm glad you're here. It's a pleasure to spend time with you talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is uh, the gremlin taming method and tapping into that beautiful thing that you really are on the inside. You know, if you think about it, here we are doing our best to communicate with each other. At least I really want to communicate something to you, but I've got to work through this body and I've got to work through this personality. The reality is I'm not my body and you're not your body and I'm not my personality and you're not yours. Uh, every cell in your body goes through a constant transition. Matter of fact, if you're over 35, as we speak, your ears are getting bigger, your nose is getting longer, and the distance from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet is shrinking. It's not good news. My body's changed dramatically. I, I used to weigh, this is the truth, seven pounds, eight ounces. All right? So we change a lot. So we're not our bodies, and we're not our personalities. Uh, personality is just a, a whole network of behaviors that emerges out of a matrix of beliefs we have about who we are, and we're not our beliefs. Beliefs, even the really juicy ones, really noble ones about ourselves or about how the world works, those beliefs are really just opinions that, that we've developed loyalty to. And I'm certainly not saying they're wrong, but they're opinions. So you're not your body, you're not your personality, you're not your beliefs, you're not your thoughts. You have thoughts, positive thoughts, negative thoughts, up thoughts, down thoughts, weird thoughts but you're not your thoughts. One of the things I like about my profession is I get to find out every day that my thoughts aren't any weirder than anybody else's. But we're not our thoughts. So what of that thing that we really, really are? That thing that exists within your body, but is not your body. Has thoughts, but is not those thoughts. There have been all sorts of names applied to it. Soul, spirit, Prana, Re, Chi, Ki, Ilan Vital, the kingdom within, the primordial vibration, God, all sorts of terms. It can't be circled with a word is the reality because it existed before the word. But for our purposes, and I've really been thinking about this, let you and I give it a word. No more adequate than the rest, but let's call it life, your very own life, a gift to you directly from the creator of this whole shebang. And I don't have any idea how all that works, and you really don't either. Uh, but it's the greatest gift you're ever going to receive. I can tell you this, when it leaves your body, even your best friends aren't going to want to hang with you for any length of time. It's the greatest gift you're ever going to receive, and you've already got it. You've already got it, and not only do you have that gift of life, but just because you're a human being, you have the knowledge to know that you have it and to appreciate it. It's the ultimate gift. You get the consciousness to know you have it, to appreciate it, and you get the ability to respond to it breath to breath, moment to moment, however you would like. Now that ability to respond to your very own life force gracefully, moment to moment, breath to breath, is known as your response ability. And that's what gremlin timing is all about, is honing your ability to respond to your life and to circumstance gracefully, breath to breath, moment to moment, through uncommon awareness. That's the primary tool. What gremlin timing isn't about, incidentally, is sort of a Tom and Jerry cartoon with an angel on one shoulder and a uh, devil or gremlin on the other and kind of resolving that dialogue. Gremlin timing is not about resolving that dialogue because in that dialogue, I guarantee you, even the angel will become a gremlin. Gremlin timing is about removing yourself from that entire dialogue and beginning to get a sliver of light between that beautiful life force that you are and all of that other stuff. And when one does that, the feeling that comes with it is one of peace, is one of contentment. Now that doesn't mean that emotion is pushed aside. You may feel sad, you may feel angry, you may feel joyful, sexual, whatever it happens to be. But those things are the waves. It's part of being alive. The force we're talking about tapping into is the water. It's the real McCoy. 
And from that place, you can experience sadness, joy, every emotion on the planet without anguish. It may hurt, but there's not anguish. Uh, there's a peace. That feeling does not have to be created. It exists within you. You know, it's interesting. The mind doesn't know a lot. It just knows about stuff. As soon as you have a direct experience, you put it in that little mind. The mind's like a warehouse that stores that stuff, you know. It's a good thing. You can go visit there. But it's different than direct experience. Direct experience has its own language. And it's not the language of the mind. It's the difference between knowing and knowing about. Direct experience is really the difference between, between knowledge and information. The Gremlin Taming Method is about starting to notice precisely how you're getting in the way of that experience and in the process evaporating those ways that you get in the way of it. As a matter of fact, the subtitle of the revised edition of Taming Your Gremlin is Taming Your Gremlin, a surprisingly simple method for getting out of your own way.